guys, Nicole here. Um, so I am going to take a little bit of a break from my kit making and kind of work on some things that I have been um, thinking about for quite a while. I've mentioned it in a few videos. I do a lot of work uh, with Ancestry.com and I love um, heritage work, like research and ancestry research. Um, my, my family and I actually took a trip um, to the East Coast and actually went to places where our ancestors um, came over and there's actually land and and um, bodies of water named after them and there's a lot of really fun stories and fun and tragic um, very interesting stories in um, my direct ancestry on actually both my sides as well as both my 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 husband's sides we've traced some back to the mayflower we we have a lot of documentation on certain families and so that stuff is so interesting to me um obviously interesting enough for us to actually go to uh the east coast and go to these places and so but my mom and i both did a lot of work actually um on her side of the family especially that whole family has always been really amazing at documenting that um his family history i have lots of books that they've put together um so i'm very blessed to have a lot of great information i had one great aunt on my dad's side that did the same and thankful that she did all that work because i have a lot of fun stuff to to start with um, Ancestry.com is also amazing. I found a lot of really neat things and I really just have been, um, you know, I can sit and look at it on the computer screen and get excited about it, but then it gets to a point where I want to do something with it. I want to actually get those stories down on paper. Now, my mom did a bunch of genealogy books um, with, with photos and with information. And so she's really taking care of like putting together the, the family lines and the dates and the facts and some stories here and there. And she really mixed those together well. But I'm going to, versus worrying about like making sure that I have all that information, I really want to just focus on individual stories and individual things that I'm finding online about my family members and putting connections together that maybe, you know, whereas what she did was more kind of factual and, and based on just this, this, and this, as far as timelines and things, I kind of want to maybe make connections and, and, and tell some stories. And so that is a route I've decided to go. Um, sorry, I have a crooked, um, there we go, a little bit better. Um, with, uh, my next, that's just what I'm motivated to work on right now. And so um, I did this last night. Uh, I wanted just to show you really quickly kind of what um, I kind of have a kit I'm working with, but it's, uh, I mean, it's basically, I have two baskets full of like just vintage um, antique style embellishments and things. And then I had another cubicle full of paper that I set aside thinking that's going to go great with the heritage page. I don't want everything to be dark and brown and black. Like I want to mix in some brighter colors, which is nice because a lot of the, um, sorry, this is driving me batty there. Um, the, the nice thing is that a lot of current paper lines have, um, the vintage element to them and so I am going to intermix some of that so like this is a fairly dark page but like you know putting in bringing in some of the the blues and and other things I I want I don't want every page to be like a typical heritage page as what we would think of it I'm gonna mix it up but I want everything to have a vintage feel to it so I'm just gonna try to kind of find that balance um but still but still bring in some newer supplies and not necessarily heritage themed supplies. Um, although I have a ton of my stash, so I'm just going to use what I have. So I made this last night and I'm sorry, I'm not having a hard time getting this. I don't know. My, um, daughters played with my camera setup, and that just was not, I haven't gotten it back. There we go. That's better. Okay. Um, and so last night I sat down and made this and just to just get going with it. And I, um, I'm finding that this kind of scrapbooking definitely starts in a different place for me. It starts as more of a, uh, story based versus like a product base. Like my kit series usually start out that way. Um, because I'm going to ancestry.com, I'm going to my paperwork that I have here and I'm finding the story and then finding to see what photos I have to go with it. And so that's kind of a fun, it's a fun 
way to approach it and a little bit different. And so that is mixing it up for me a little bit, which I need sometimes. Um, one of the things that I do that I am going to have, I know, a lot of fun with and I did last night was I'm actually using actual, actual, um, like items from an, um, antique stores. So while there's a ton of stuff in the scrapbooking industry that looks heritage or looks, you know, antique, like a lot of Tim Holtz products and those types of things. And I have a lot of that that I've, I've collected over the last five, 10 years. Um, I am actually going to incorporate real true life stuff. So that's why I wanted to show you today. So I'm going to put this kind of here and show you kind of what is re is actual real. So like this here um, is torn out from my old calendar. And because they're, they were married in December, I just pulled the December one. If you look at the back, and you can only see bits and pieces of it, farmers used to go through and they would write down the, what the weather was like every day. So I have like three or four of these old calendars from the 1920s, the 1940s, where every day they had written in, it was cloudy today, it rained today. It, so such a cool piece of history. It just I love that. Um, and so I went ahead and just tore some of that out and uh, used that. And then this was actually an old, old envelope that had a bunch of old paperwork in it um, that I got at an antique store. I think I got the whole envelope for like a buck. And I actually used the actual envelope on there. I think everything else is like actual manufactured stuff. I think, yes. Um, but I want to show you some of the fun things I found over the years I'm going to be incorporating into my heritage pages. Okay. Um, so I have... Um, whenever I go to an antique store, I always look in their like book, books and papers and things and just try to find fun stuff with pretty colors. And this, I found these, these are old like ledgers. Uh, I just love these. I think they're just beautiful and they have the black and the red and they have that really cool, you know, ledger print in the back. So I'll be definitely using stuff like that. I'll be using, um, old books, old dictionaries. Um, I have these old dictionaries that are always fun to tear out and use as backgrounds. Um, I have this fun thing. I actually, I love this. So I have this like hangy thing that I use for decoration and I find vintage postcards for different holidays and use it as a display. And so this is where I keep all of those, those postcards. But some of these aren't holiday themed. Some of these are just postcards of different places. Um, and so I think I'm going to be able to use some of those on scrapbook pages, but I just keep them all stored in here, which is also from an antique store itself. Um, I have a bunch of old music, um, like old music sheets that I just have a really fun look to them and let some of them have color to them. But I thought I would use some of those full stack of those and then I have a pack of these that I got in like a big bag of them for like a buck at Goodwill or something and I, these are so pretty and I think I can kind of cut these out and use them as background they'd also be a really fun texture and then there's also some of the um, actual um, uh, what do you call them um, whatever they're called for sewing the actual um, templates or whatever and uh, I think this will be a really beautiful it's kind of like tissue paper um, thing to use on layouts as well and it has definitely the, the vintage look to them then I have I talked about these calendars I have a few of them let me move these out of the way here I have a few of these I just kind of grab them when I see them if they're reasonably priced um, and have a bunch of them like I have this one here that I haven't even opened but how cute are these what is that going to be to put on a page um and even like the photos I don't know it's going to be really I haven't opened that it's it's from that's from 1957 and then here's this just this in itself would be fun because my both all my both sides of my family are um have well on my side like my um, maternal and paternal sides all farmers like go way way back they've, they've always farmed so I love images like this I'm gonna, gonna be able to use and I tell those types of stories um, and that's gonna be fun so this one is from 1928 and um, 
again, it just talks about has all the they, someone documented all the weather, and then there's stuff on the back, and there's these really great old farm photos here that I could cut that out because some of my ancestors were pig farmers, some had cows, um, but there's those kind of images on all of these, which is really cool. So there's a lot that this can give me um, to use. Um, and it's just fun. I kind of try to read them before I rip them apart and just kind of, it's just kind of a fun thing. There's chickens. So just really cool. Um, here's another one from 1942. How beautiful is that? Like this just makes me think of Jenny Bolin. And she's actually the one that really got me into like being okay with going to an antique store and looking for this kind of stuff and actually using it on our pages. Um, she had a great class with Big Picture once and, um, I was so inspired by her and I just love her stuff. And this just has, this is, I think where she gets her inspiration is from stuff like this. And so it's just so fun. So again, up here, they, they wrote down the, the weather. 1943. I don't know if this one's any different or not. Yep, that's pretty much the same. And this one's from 1929. So they just wrote in all the weather, which is so fun. Love that. So those will be fun to to use. I've had them for a long time, and it, I think it's I have to get past uh, ripping them up and um, and just do it. So um, then I have a bunch of fun stuff. Uh, like these old children's books, I think will be cute if I have some p pictures with little kids and um, uh, flashcards for, um, which will be great for layouts about school. They just have that fun old look to them. Um, these are what I think I had when I was a kid. And let's see, just lots of different more flashcards there. Just lots of different things. Uh, like this was from an old, I got this, this camera is actually on, on display in my home, but I thought I could use the box for something. Um, this is an old booklet that has some fun photos in it. Again, some old, an old stamp, some old um, children's books. I thought would be really cute. Some more of those. This is a Mother's Day poem book that I thought would be cute to have as a, as in, as a layer on maybe a page about moms. And just some old paperwork, but it just looks so cool. I love this stuff. Um, there's some papers in there. And there are some books that are so cool, like stuff like uh, old, um, oh, like old, like little, little ledger books. And I keep them displayed in my living room upstairs. So I think they're so cool looking. Um, this, I have some old actual photos of people I don't know. But I thought I could uh, use the frame. Um, this is an American series drawing book. <laughs> How cool is that? I remember doing this when I was a kid, tracing the shapes and things. But I thought I could use those for something fun. Some more of these. I, the, the old uh, frames around these photos are just beautiful. And I have a bunch of old photo albums, too, that I could tear out and use those pages. This is an old ledger book. And I think that was so fun. So... Just an idea of some of the things I'm going to be using um, on my pages. Uh, and then, of course, I have, you know, a lot. Well, some of this in here. Like, these are actual, like, old cards I found. And they have a bunch of farm-themed words on them. Um, but most of these here are all, like, ephemera packs, like Tim Holtz. And, oh, what was that one company? Um... It was like a Jolie's Boutique kind of side company that did a bunch of stuff like this. I have, I got a bunch of these from TJ Maxx. Um, so I have a whole bunch of just ephemera pieces that are vintage and heritage. And some of these, like I said, are, are the real thing. And some of them are just, you know, from, from scrapbook manufacturers um, that made them. I have a whole bunch of um, sticker sheets and things. Like I said, these have been collected over many many years but I just have all this stuff out I just kind of dumped out the two uh two baskets I have where I store this stuff separately from the rest of my stash and I just have them out on my floor and I have all my paper pads out um and there's a few symbol bunny lines that I have out 
And then I have a whole other little half basket of things um, of kind of bigger items. I'll try to get it up here. See if you can see it. Um, here. So I have like bingo cards. I think these are real ones actually. And then, so these are all kind of like my larger layering pieces that I gotten over the years. Um, a lot of uh, cards, like these are old. These are, um, I'm not sure who those are from. Those are fun. Um, King, a lot of King Company. Um, sometimes I'll grab things from, um, from gift shops when I go to different places, like when we were on the East Coast or when we were in DC. A lot of times our gift shops would have fun stuff that have the Americana theme to them. Here's some old bingo cards, an old dictionary paper. So just a whole host of just things I've kind of thrown in here over the years and are going to be so great for layering and just adding some meaning to some of these pages as far as um, matching the time frame in which some of the photos and stories are going to be. And so what I'm doing that is I'm just going to my family tree on Ancestry.com and then I'm, I'm looking, I pulled all my heritage photos and just seeing kind of what I have in my stash as far as um, photos go and then I'm trying to just match up some stories that I wanted to get down and some of them are fairly basic like this one here is my gr great grandma and grandpa when they were married and then uh, you know a photo that was closer to when they passed and I just went through and kind of told their a little bit of their life story. I don't have a lot of details about this particular couple. This this my dad's mom's side of the family. I don't have a ton of extra information on, and so uh, at least in the more recent, like um, I think as I go back further, there, there's more on ancestry. But with this particular couple, I just had the basic information, and so I just told that I told about how they were married, where they were married, where they moved and died and kind of the time that they lived in they lived during the great depression during world war ii um and just they farmed they only had an eighth grade education um but they could both read and write and they were farmers and she took care of the household and the kids and um just told that basic story just to get something down on paper about them and hopefully i can find some more individual stories about their lives uh, but this particular grandma um, their daughter that was my grandma passed away when I was fairly young so I didn't get to talk to her very much about this kind of stuff um, and so un unfortunately I don't have a lot of information but I'm gonna do some research on on Google and other places and see if I can find out any more um, familysearch.org is a place I just got on and they have a lot of information on there too so it's just a fun it's just fun it's fun when you find something like I didn't know that or oh that's I have an actual document now that verifies a story that I that I had heard and so it's just a really fun process so I'll try to kind of um invite you in on this journey as I continue to make pages and um, kind of keep you updated. And this may be maybe another series that I put together just so people who want to watch these kind of um, videos can focus on those. And then I'll be back soon with my kit videos. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.